Simon Ethie Engel. She was a girl who was born in Dresden, Germany. You can see that on the map. I circled it on there for you. Um, she was born in 1921, so she was she was still a teenager. She was 17 at the time of the Crystal Knot, and she was just a young adult in uh, World War II. And she uh, she grew up in a working class family. Uh, they they were more uh, anti-Nazi than than the average family. She says um, uh, her first experience or exposure to the Nazi party was in 1933. Her uh, Father uh, went to a demonstration and was beat up by the SA. He came back with uh, bruises and, and cuts. And they, they beat her father up. That was 1933. That's when she first um, uh, realized what what the, the Nazis were about and what they could potentially do. Um, for my presentation, I, I picked up uh, 15 quotes from from the chapter and. Uh, so I'm just going to talk about each one and give a little <coughs> explanation about each, each quote. Uh, this one says, we can't even spend time together as friends because they'll simply always assume we're up to something. Uh, this is from her cousin. Her cousin was in the Communist Party. He was an active member and a very active uh, anti-Nazi. Uh, he was captured and taken to a, a concentration camp. I think it was for a year and a half. Um, he was able to get out. and. Uh, continue with life afterwards. Um, her cousin was, uh, he was put under surveillance, so they always had someone in place to be watching over him, what he was doing, paying attention to who he was with, what their conversations were about. Um, at first, the war had progressed positively, and you could see immediately who was a fascist. They had maps and stuck little flags in them when the wear knots uh, moved forward. Um, so she's talking about, at, at first the war was, was widely popular um, with the German people. They, they had made progress for the first couple of years and uh, hadn't suffered any major defeats. And so she just made note of, uh, you could tell who was a dedicated fascist were the ones that were you know, eager to see where the, where the wear knot was expanding to. But she, of course, wasn't. She didn't. She didn't care about that. She thought it was um, silly. Uh, oh well, we were rather naive at the beginning. I was still have a child. Um, Effie, she uh, she says that she didn't really understand what was going on um, at the time of the crystal knot. <coughs> she was still. I think she was seventeen. She, she was still young, he didn't quite take everything. She couldn't see the whole big picture yet until, until afterwards. Uh, no, they should just as well hear everything. The way they act is scandalous. And this is a quote from her mother. Her mother was very bold, not afraid to say what she, what she thought. Um, I guess uh, Effie's, Effie's family, they, they lived in an apartment building, and below them, some active Nazis and they, they could probably hear what they were saying, so after you'd always warn her mother, she would say, um, you need to be quiet, like they're gonna they're gonna turn us in, but her mother would continue just to say whatever she whatever she thought about the Nazis. She, she wasn't afraid of them. The only person I knew who had denounced somebody was a was a colleague where I worked. He even bragged about it. And that that's not a real picture of the person, that's just a I found some SS guys. But, uh, <laughs> um, she said that uh, lots of people were denounced, lots of people were turned in, but she said that it was a rare occasion when you, when you actually found out who the person that was denounced by the people. Um, she said she only knew of one person, it was a person that she worked with, and he was, he was actually proud of, of turning people in. Careful, don't talk freely. He works in your department. Don't say anything when he's around. And this is a quote from, uh, this from one of uh, one of Effie's friends, just kind of warning her to be careful. Um, they, they knew who the, who the one person was that, that could turn them in. And, uh, 
Effie uh, says that uh, she wasn't really scared. There was a question asked to her, and it's like, were you ever scared of being turned in? She said no, but, but she was cautious nonetheless. But otherwise, you usually did not find out who denounced whom. So like I was saying earlier, you, the people were always turned in, but you, you didn't usually find out who had denounced. His name was Israel, and one day, one fine day, he disappeared. Um, so this was in 1937, um, and he was taking a French class, and her teacher was a Jew, and one day he just disappeared. Um, and she didn't know why, and she never, she never found out what, what actually happened to him. She assumes that he was sent to a concentration camp. Uh, I thought it was kind of interesting, though. She wasn't, at least in, in, the, in the chapter, she wasn't very... Uh, Concerned that he was taken away, she was more upset that, that her class ended. She kind of made a big deal that you know she was she paid this money to take a French class, and then the teacher was taken away, so the class ended. So she didn't she wasn't sympathetic um, towards the Jew, which I thought was kind of interesting. Two Jews were picked up, and they disappeared and never showed up again. I didn't know them personally; I only knew them by sight. Uh, this was. Uh, this is a quote from Effie. It's, it's about the night of Christmas in 1938. Um, across from the place that she worked at, there was a shop that was owned by uh, a Jewish couple. And a BSA came and uh, broke their shop and took everything. And then the Jews, they were just standing right by watching it happen. And then the BSA came and uh, picked them up, took them away. And she never figured out what happened to them either. Um, kind of like the previous experience with her teacher, she just, she says that the Germans just kind of just sat and nod, just watched what's happening, didn't really, I mean, they might have done some things in certain circumstances, but they just kind of watched and didn't really think much of it. <clears throat> they have driven them down into those tunnels and forced them to work under SS supervision, and one after another of them is dropping dead because they simply don't get enough to this is a quote, not from Effie, but it's from Effie's mother's, uh, one, of her, one of her mother's friends that was uh, captured and sent to a work camp. And while in this work camp, this, this person worked with um, Russian POWs and uh, Jewish prisoners. And him, I think he was a communist. He was treated better than the Russian POWs and the, the Jews. And this is one of the first, the first time that, that, she pins, or that she pinpoints what was actually she learned what was, what was actually happening to the Jews. She didn't really know, she just knew that they were being uh, abducted and taken away. And then this person kind of uh, let her know that uh, they were being treated really poorly and actually dying. I thought it couldn't be true, that nobody could be that brutal. I didn't completely believe that at first. It was unimaginable for me. Um, so, like I said, at, at the, she was still kind of, still kind of a child when this first started happening. She didn't quite understand, and she didn't even, she didn't even believe it as things were being revealed to her. It was, it was hard for her to accept what was, you know, what was actually, what was actually going on. They had also confirmed it with rather exact information. And this quote, she's talking about uh, the radios from from London and from Moscow. They were broadcasting what was going on in Germany and giving giving the German people kind of a broader perspective of what was happening uh, during the war and what was happening to the Jews. And she said she was surprised that they actually, these foreign radios were actually uh, pretty accurate um, by telling what was happening. And she says, it really must be true. Um, she eventually accepts the Jews really were being killed. Um, she didn't she didn't know at first, but as these radio broadcasts were um, were going on, it was, it was confirmed to her that uh, Jews were being massacred. Nazis can only be bad people. Uh, this was probably my favorite quote from the whole the whole chapter. Um, I just decided to put it in there because. Uh, 
And that's, that's how she felt, all the experiences that she had had um, with Nazis, that her to believe that Nazis can only be bad people. So that's it. Any questions? Mm -hmm.